All right, this is a video of starting holes. What I do is I lay it out on the CNC and I use my CNC to locate the hole, the hole pattern. And then I take it to the drill press and finish drilling the holes. So this gives me a straight and true way to locate each hole. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, that, especially when the alignment is critical. If you watch, it goes really, really slow. It's, it's a speed of point. 05 for the plunge and I go to a depth of 0.02 for the pack and then bring it back up. And if you listen this time. One more. And that's a speed. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is lower it a little bit and run the program again. All right, what I've done, I'm making an adapter plate to put my uh, spindle on an existing HD3 or HD4. Um, I drilled these four holes already. They're a quarter inch. Now these are, the spindle I have has six millimeters versus quarter inch bolts. So they're a six millimeter with a thread. So I'm using a five millimeter bit so I can thread these four holes. And what I've done is I just lay them out with the CNC. As you can see, the hole just goes down long enough so that it centers my drill. And the reason I do that is because uh, the spindle doesn't have the oomph, if you will, or the horsepower that this monster does. You know, my drill press has the power just to cut through this in about five or 10 seconds. If you drill it with a CNC, it takes forever because our CNC is really designed to use for wood. It says it'll do brass and aluminum, but it really does it slow. You have to peck drill this on the CNC at a speed of about 6,000 RPMs, which reduces the force that you have on that spindle. And you can only go down at a rate of about 0.01 inches per minute. So, I mean, it goes really, really slow. And then it works fine. But uh, you have to go slow or you overheat your bit. You have to keep it lubed. And all I do is just spot drill these, if you will, or locate, locate them so that I can find it and then just drill them through here and then tap it and I'm done. Um, yeah, you can buy this plate already made from uh, um, Next Wave Automation, but I just thought I'd do it myself. So, all right, that's some Hopefully that's helpful information. I've cut this steel on the CNC and it does take a long time to do it, but I made my own brackets for one of them. You've seen those in some of the other videos. And this is just the standard clamp. It'll mount right here and it'll work fine. You can see it doesn't take long to clean It's pretty good to have. And it uses the pilot holes that are just initially started on the, the CNC and the location within a thousand of the end. And it's pretty hard to do with the long hole. And they all do it a metal CNC. Keep in mind the CNCs that we have are for the wood. You know everybody advertises that they'll do it only for me well. I do that and you know, locate everything and just finish it off with the normal tools that you don't have to worry about. I have my, all my holes drilled with this last one and then I'll tap them and lock them in. Alright, what we're doing is we're taking this off. There's four bolts holding it in place. One, two, three, four. So I've got those out, so you pull that off. That gives you this mounting plate. And what I did is I made a mounting plate to go on there. You can buy this from uh, Next Wave, already pre-made. But I had aluminum laying around, so I made it myself. Um, there's four bolts that go in here. They screw in here. I'll have to watch and see if these are too big. If they are, I'll get some shorter ones. But for this demonstration, that's what we do. Two there, and then two down here. 
And I did these on my CNC shark. I drilled pilot holes as you saw earlier in the tape and then I drilled them out. So there's four. All right. Now I'll screw those down. It's uh, not that hard to do. For example, I'll just use, and keep in mind that these are 27, a Torx 27 bit. Don't use 25, don't use 26, because basically what it does is strips the head. And then they call the next wave and say, hey, these heads are all stripped out. Well, they're stripped out because you use the wrong one. If you can't find anyone where, this is a Husky, uh, if you can't find it, uh, get it at uh, next wave. They sell them. So, I'm going to leave this one setting up here for a minute. Okay, next what goes on is the spindle clamp itself, and it just screws in place. You notice there's four holes there, and that matches the four holes here. All right, and I am going to put it on this way. I didn't get my Allen wrench, so and you have to get it straight. So you have to put this flat on the back and then it's straight, and then you just tighten it down. And that gives you your spindle clamp, your adapter plate, it changes your HD3 or HD4 to a simple hookup so that you can slide your spindle clamp on, makes it tight and nice to this, and gets rid of the big black plastic unit. Any questions, send me a text. Have a good day. Up and down. Yeah, you can see that the plates in. We still have the full range of motion. The bolts are a little long. You can see it on the top. It doesn't hurt anything. So we, we had to cut them off on the bottom, which was no big deal. But uh, it works pretty good. You can see it's got the full range up and down and left and right, and it made a cleaner mount for me anyway. I thought it was nicer. And you can get this mount now from. Uh, Next way, when you buy the spindle, uh, you can get a this mount and a plate to convert it, an adapter plate for $99. And uh, it's worth it. You know, I made my own simply because I had the steel, the aluminum for free, and uh, I'm bored. Old and retired, you know how it is. So I got Jake to help me. Thanks. So if you're bored and tired, I can send you the D DFX file from VCarve, and you can make your own plate. Take care and have a great day.